What's up, little artist? Trobro is back with another e-learning video. This time, it's part two of my Pixlr series. Now, today, I'm going to be teaching you a couple more tools to add to your arsenal in Pixlr. This will help you if you want to do stuff in Photoshop, and Illustrator, or you do any other kind of like photo editing or uh, digital painting. Um, a lot of these tools are the exact same across the board. So, by learning these, you're going to really be helping yourself in the future if you choose to have a career in art. And uh, let's get started. All right, kiddos, we're gonna start on our home base, which is Google, because we're on a Chromebook, and I'm gonna type in the search bar of that little magnifying glass. I'm gonna type in Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R, hit return or enter, and it's gonna bring up the first hit on the website is the Pixlr.com. Now, you should be watching this in another tab. Up here, if you need to know how to make another tab, hit that plus. So right here, I have e-learning with Trobro, and this is my very first Pixlr video. So if you have not seen this one, go watch this one. I introduce you to the app and some of the things that you can do on it. This is gonna be kind of building off the things that you already know on this one. So here we are on Pixlr. I'm gonna click on pixlr.com photo editor. It's gonna bring me this nice website with the girl with the balloons. Try photo editor XX, Pixlr X. We don't want that. We want the second one, open Pixlr editor. Here it comes, it's booting it up. It's all web-based, which is nice. You don't have to download anything. Create new image, open image from a computer. So if you had an image you wanted to, to edit, you could do that, or an image from URL. That means if you wanted a picture from the internet and you wanted to change it, you could do that. We'll talk about that later. Right now, I just wanna still introduce you some of the tools. Ooh, here we go. Now, where is my paper? File, let's do new, new image. Create, there we go. I had to go to file new to create this new piece of paper. Uh, so I wanna see the whole paper. All right, there we go. All right, so over here, my layers, over here are my tools. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make a new layer. This is the first thing I always do. Um, so that I can have more control over what's going on. So I have a new layer, it's like a transparency laid up uh, upon my canvas and I can do whatever I want to it. And the first tool that I'm going to introduce you to is this one, this shape right here. And if you hover over it, it says drawing tool. Now, sometimes artists will use pencils, paint brushes, uh, markers, charcoal to make marks on a paper. But this one will help you draw straight lines, uh, perfect shapes. Uh, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, like your square not being completely square, more of a rectangle or circles being a little lopsided. This up here, it's got rectangles. We've got rounded rectangles. We've got ellipse or circles or spheres or ovals and then the line tool. So let's say I wanted to make a horizon line. Let's separate uh, this. Let's make this like a landscape so I can go to my line tool right here. Uh, normal mode. All right, normal. Not changing anything. Size. This is the thing I want to mess with a little bit. My size. I want to change this to three. Um, three seems to be a pretty good size for me. I think uh, it's not too fat. It's not too skinny. It's just kind of just right. So and then let's, right here, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna be using my touchpad for this. I think it's just a little easier. I'm gonna click it and then I bring this all the way over. I think if I hit, no. Um, on some of the editors, if you hit shift, it'll make it straight, but I think I just have to eyeball it. There we go. Now I have separated this. I have my ground on the bottom, my sky on the top. Here, now let's try, oops, <laughs> I touched it a couple times in it. So remember control Z is for my undo. You have a history over here. This history shows what things I've done. So showed that I did the line tool two times. I undid it. So got my line. It's my landscape. Uh, here, let's. I'm gonna use my paintbrush tool. Or not my paintbrush. My paint bucket, the fill bucket, and let's add. Let's make some sky, just so that it make it looks more like outside. Okay, light blue. There we go. Then let's do some green for my grass. The green grass grows all around and around. The green grass grows all around. Look at that. Perfect. I made a landscape there. I'm done. Call it a day. It's minimalist. No, I'm just kidding. Let's let's learn. Let's try to put a, a building on here. So I don't want to draw on this layer I'm gonna because I might mess up and then I can, I don't want to mess up this layer. So once you're, you've drawn something, I usually make a new layer so that I don't mess this up. And so I have a new layer. All right. Actually, I think I made two new layers by accident. Let's uh, do, 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 do. All right. Go away, keyboard. That always pops up. Oh well, it, it wants to stay up, so it's gonna stay up forever. All right, let's go back to my shape tool, which is the one that looks like a square and a circle. And let's make a square. 
um, for my color. Black and hit OK. Now I'm going to make a square. So what I do is I click it and then I just drag it and it can make the square however big I want. So if I want like a really big square, great. Control Z. Now notice that the whole shape, it filled it with black. But let's say you didn't want a black building. Let's say you wanted just like an outline of the building. All right, you'll notice that up here, it says fill shape and then it has the color. So if I wanted to, I could pick like, let's say red, and then it should be a, f a red square filled. And then you might notice that there's a border size. Here, let's, uh, that's how thick my line is. So if I go back and I hit three for this, it should give me a black square filled with red paint. Like that. Isn't that nice? I think this is rounded. I'm gonna go to regular rectangle because I don't want the edges to be round. Okay, I do not want it to be filled. And let's do whew, nice building like this. Eh. Let's make it the line a little thicker. Let's do three for this. Three, enter. All right, here we go. Oh, look at that. Doesn't that look wonderful? All right, now let us use the line tool. I'm going to make a line going from here back to the horizon line there and then do the same thing down here and it's going to the same spot. Wonderful. See it's almost looking 3D already. Now I'm going to connect these. Now it's kind of really small so sometimes what I would do is I would zoom in when you got to do something. Okay, use my hand. I'm touching just H and it brings up my hand tool. We talked about that in the first one. That allows me to move around my image. All right, let's go back to the shape tool. Where is that shapes? They all look kind of similar. Now, one thing I do like about like Photoshop is if I hit shift, it makes the line completely straight. So I'm just gonna have to, I'm eyeballing this. There we go. Now I can zoom back out and I have a nice little building. It's a little slanted, but that's the best I can do. And now I can fill this. Um, buildings are usually gray, so I'm going to go to my paint bucket. And let's do a nice light gray for my building. Hit OK. Look at that. Now, for this part, let's say that it gets kind of a lighter to darker. I want to make it look a little more 3D. There's this tool right over here called the Gradient Tool. And the Gradient what it'll do is it'll transition from one color to another color. And so what I can do is I can pick for this, let's see, will it let me change it? What if it doesn't? Oh, color. Let's do like a lighter gray, like that. Hit OK. And then for me, this one to do a little bit darker of a gray. Hit OK. So now it transitions from a light gray to a little bit of a darker gray. Hit enter. Come on, come on. Now what I can do is I can take this and I drag it and it'll have, what in the world? I thought it would be relocated uh, just to that. Let's do wand tool. There we go. All right. I didn't realize that it was going to fill up the whole thing. There we go. Here, let's do it the other way. Control Z, undo that. Look at that. So what I had to do right there, let's let's back up a little bit because that might've been a little confusing. So my gradient tool, when I went to go do it, it filled up the whole thing. So it goes dark gray to light gray. I, I don't want that because it just totally messed up my artwork. And so right here you have a, a wand tool. And what it does is it'll pick a color. Like if you say, hey, find a color, like this gray, it'll find everything that is that gray. So what I did was I, I, I said, select that shape right there so it has it selected. And you see these little marching ants walking around it. And so that means if I fill, it'll only fill that shape. So then I went back to my gradient tool and then I did that. So now it looks like it gets darker as it goes back. Has a cool little 3D effect. Uh, 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 da, da, da. So watch this, I could do another, let's do my other layer. I could do this one more time. I can make another building. Let's go back to my shapes. 
Let's do a square. Put her size three. All right, let's do. Where'd it go? That's what you get for free, right? I don't know why it is not showing me my thing. This is the weirdest thing that has ever happened. Uh, fill shape, no. Three, normal opacity. <laughs> oh, Mr. Turbridge, it's not making anything. You know why it's not working? Because this shape is still selected. You see that right there? This is the kind of stuff where you gotta like think about what's going on. So because these marching ants are still going on, I can only make art inside that, so I need to deselect it. So I'm just gonna click off of it. This is a marquee tool. You can make shapes with the marching ants and say only do things inside the, those ants. So I need to click off that. Now it should let me work. That's a good uh, little troubleshooting thing. I was like really confused. I was like, man, what is wrong with this program? See, now it works fine. Here, let's uh, hide. I can hide layer two so I don't see it. And I can make another building. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more. And do 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 H. Move over, uh, zoom out a little bit. A little bit more. There we go. Where's my line tool? All right. Got my line tool again. Going to go to vanishing point over here. And I'm going to do the bottom one, two. Still, once again, these are not completely straight, but that's all right. Go to my paint bucket. Do a fill. And then I'm going to use my magic wand tool. It's kind of like a dandelion. I'm going to click that shape, go back to my gradient tool, and then... There we go. I'm going to get my marquee tool, deselect it, say, hey, don't pick that anymore. Let's go back to... Then open this one up and see if it looks like... Whoa, see, look. Looks like a building is like falling over. But what I can do is I can take that building that I just made and put it behind the other building and then suddenly it looks like two buildings and it has a cool 3D effect. So you can play with this, make different shapes, see what you can do, use the gradient tool, make things look 3D. I could make the, the grass down here look 3D too. Let's use the, the magic wand tool and we'll select the green grass. Let's go back to my gradient. Uh, come up here, it says gradient, and this is where you pick the colors. So you go here. I pick that square, and then come over here. I can pick a, like a dark green. Click OK. So now it's going green to gray. Click this gray button, brings up the color right here. And then let's pick another. Let's so maybe do a little yellower green, a little bit lighter. Hit OK. So now I've got a dark green to a light green. Click the gradient tool. So now I will go like this. Oh, look at that. See, it's already looking more three. Anytime I want to deselect, I kind of just go back to the marquee tool, pick something else. Look at that. Isn't that fun? Fun and simple. I could use my shape tool, make some doors if I wanted to. Uh, go back to my square. Let's do fill shape. Let's do a brown. So I'll pick like an orange and brown's kind of like a, a shade of orange. Hit OK. Zoom in just a little bit. And then I can make a door. Uh-oh. Notice where to go, Mr. Trowbridge. That's because I, I'm still on this layer. See that, how that blue line? So I think if I was to go like this, get rid of this, you'll probably see, yeah, there's my door. So undo that. So one thing you want to make sure that you're always on the right layer. So I want to be on the big building. All right. I want to make sure. I also noticed that the outline was outline of my door. I want to be black. Fill shape. Click that. See, this program can be complicated. There's like a million things that could go wrong. You have to be paying attention, see what's going on. There we go. There's a nice little door. Same thing over here. Wonderful. I could also do a little windows. Let's change it to be like a light blue. 
how light? I don't know. Look at this. There we go. Isn't that nice? Now, if you did, I wonder if I can copy these. Sometimes you can copy... Uh, nope. Let's see if it'll let me copy these. No, that's alright. Sometimes you can copy and paste things. I wonder if it'll let me here. Let's see if I can... Oof. If it's on a new layer, I might be able to. But that's, that's another video. Let's just uh, stick with that. Making shapes, coloring them in. Use our drawing tool. Square, circle, line. Fill shape, the color. All right, I think I've given you enough tools to mess around with. Oh, my eyedropper tool. Eyedropper just picks whatever color. It's like, hey, what color is this right here? Oh, it's that green. Oh, this is that gray. This is that blue you used. A nice thing if you forget, you're like, oh, what color? Because there's like a million possibilities right here. So the eyedropper, okay. Eyedropper tool is great. Where is it on here? Right here, eyedropper tool or color picker tool. All right, but it looks like an eyedropper because that's what it's called in Photoshop. So, all right, I think I've given you plenty of things to do, to play around with. Enjoy your little video. Well guys, that's all the time that we have today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I want you to know that these apps can be a little confusing. There's a lot to them. And so I'm trying to piecemeal it to you, show you how to use a tool at a time, and hopefully over some time, you'll learn and be very comfortable with it. But it just takes practice and a lot of trial and error. So just stick with it, see what you can make, be creative, and just always keep making art.